Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we're taking a look at a message that you need to hear right now. And to do this reading we will be pulling out four tarot cards for the four piles. Uh, unless you prefer to pick your piles using your zodiac signs, in that case you will find a time stamp to that down in the description box. All right, I can already see the four piles. So that'll be pile one, pile two, pile three, and pile number four. All right, let's check out what we have for today's reading. For pile number one, you have the full card. For pile number two, you have the lover's card. For pile number three, you have the strength card. And for pile number four, you have the seven of wands. If you prefer to pick your piles using crystals, let me add these right now. There we go. So for pile number one, you have the Dalmatian Jasper. For pile number two, you have the Sodalite. For pile number three, you have the Tiger's Eye. And for pile number four, you have the Rhodonite. So, Take a look at which one of these four piles or four crystals you're the most drawn to, and this will be the pile for you here today. In case you feel drawn to more than one pile, and in case you're drawn to even all of the piles, trust your intuition. This means that there are more messages that you need to hear right now that I'm sure uh, are being given to you to guide you in your life and to let you know about things that you need to hear at the moment. And once you're ready, you will find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. In a moment, I am about to assign different zodiac signs to each pile. And so if this is something that you do not prefer, please pause the video, take as much time as you need. And yeah, once you're ready, I will see you in your readings. But as mentioned, if you prefer to pick your piles using your zodiac signs, then my dear soul family, as you may know already, this part of the introduction was created specifically for you guys. Um, what I like to do is shuffle your zodiac signs really well. And in a moment, I will be drawing out four signs for each pile. Okay, I think we're pretty much done shuffling. Let's draw out the first four signs. Oh, sorry, I'll be drawing out three signs for each pile because today we have four piles. So for pile number one, you have Taurus, the sign Taurus, the sign Cancer, and the sign Sagittarius. As for pile number two, the signs are Libra, Aquarius, and Pisces. For pile number three, the signs are Leo, Capricorn, and Aries. 
As for pile number four, the signs are Virgo, Scorpio, and Gemini. So, my dear soul family, these are the zodiac signs and their association to each of the piles in today's reading. Please feel free to pick your pile or piles using your sun, moon, or rising. I highly recommend, of course, that you check out the three. Alternatively, if you prefer, prefer to pick your piles using another placement or placements in your chart, feel free to do that as well. These are all just different ways to make it easier and more enjoyable for you to pick your piles. But at the end of the day, it all relies or depends on how you feel and want to pick your reading. Your way is the right and best way for you. And once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at what you need to hear right now. Uh, let me quickly introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful Dalmatian Jasper. Your significator card is the Fool card. And of course, if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Taurus, Cancer, and Sagittarius. Welcome to your reading. Just a quick disclaimer, as I always remind you guys, if these are not your zodiac signs, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Okay, so I believe we have all of your tea leaves ready. Let's explore your cards. So your full card has the words, fortune favors the bold. Very nice. All right. You also have feeling with the keyword sensitivity. You can see all the fish, all the koi fish, I believe. All right, let's keep that there. Both have this element of just trusting your emotions, trusting how you feel with the girl in the water, right? in the element of feelings to just jump on the your emotions or something but let's see you have saturn in scorpio with inheritance this definitely has this um idea of being lucky not just is the fool lucky and you can see it here with fortune favors the bold but with inheritance now, putting aside the fact that we lose uh, a dear member that we love, the idea of inheritance itself, of being lucky, of having a great fortune that maybe we didn't really work hard for, right? Of just suddenly being blessed with um, a lot of fortune that our loved ones left for us. So that's where I'm getting the idea that there's a highlight on you here of you being very fortunate. It's kind of like beginner's luck, you know? When you try something for the first time, make a bold move where usually everyone else would be scared. Uh, I feel like on your first time doing something, you will be lucky to have so much of what others may have had to work hard for to get. You're getting all of that easily with that bold move. I feel like maybe that's fated for you, for you to happen. I don't know. Maybe that's why you're being guided to just follow that emotion. It's calling for you for a reason to do something. I'm sure as we take a look at your tarot cards, we'll be able to understand more of what that is. But it's certainly what you need to hear right now. You have Jupiter and Cancer with speculation. Again, Jupiter is the planet of great luck and fortune. So yeah, cancer is emotions, 
the water element trust your emotions at the moment it's making you see something into your future that you're meant to have so you have apocalypsis uh, sorry apo apocalypsis is how it's pronounced so maybe this is talking about your emotions maybe your emotions are making you afraid or maybe something else let's see you have and i'm noticing a lot of circles circles that's a circle and you've got a lot of circles with your tea leaf so it's like something's gonna circle back to you let's see you have dog protection from a powerful friend and you definitely have the energy of dog very strong so dog is protection i feel like are you in that case, this is talking about maybe your emotions. Your emotions are making you feel afraid. Will this happen to me? Will it not work? I might drown. I feel like with the presence of dog here, this is talking about how you're going to be absolutely protected with walls upon walls upon walls. There's a castle here from the very things that you are afraid of. It's not going to happen to you. You have ant, work, achievement, success. Exactly. Invitation to work towards the things that you feel at the moment. Go for it. And the things that you're speculating, that upheaval, the, the wrong things you feel are going to happen, you're going to be protected from it. And although you are a beginner at this, you're just starting out. Maybe you've heard a lot of stories about the people who started whatever it is that you want to start now. Or jump into now and maybe have lost something that's not going to happen to you or something went wrong that's not going to happen to you is definitely your strongest message here but at the end of the day you're being guided to follow your heart love deep affection and caring your heart is calling out for something it is calling out for it that much because you're meant to move in that direction will you be receiving what you have in mind Perhaps, maybe, mostly you will. Or maybe it's kind of like shooting for the... the I know it's the, the saying is shooting for the moon. Actually, that does uh, make sense. Shoot for the moon because if you miss, you'll reach the stars, you know? So you land on the stars. Missing is actually a cool thing in case it happens because maybe your goals how you see them at the moment are limiting you. Maybe you're meant to get even bigger things. So follow your heart for now and you are going to be very fortunate. You have chair filled. Someone new is entering your life. Chair filled here is definitely talking about how what you want will be fulfilled. You will be sitting, you're jumping to go somewhere and you will be sitting exactly where you want to go if not better and you have cat to a two-faced friend and i was as i was saying falling you got cat as you know cats have nine lives this means that will mistakes happen absolutely but you will never fall and be unalived <laughs> it, it things won't end for you a cat has nine lives it just shows that some things will work some things won't and when they won't work you will get up instantly and try again and again and again it's just that what you want is not going to end is not going to finish is not going to turn into a huge issue it's really just there to guide you and it's just going to improve for you things are always on the up they will improve for you just follow your heart for now okay so Let's take a look at your tarot cards and see what it is that you need to hear right now. So you've got the Ten of Wands. You have the King of Swords. The Eight of Swords. Looks like there's more here. All right. You have the Six of Cups and the Magician. 
I think we have space for one more card. You also have the Ace of Cups. Okay. I feel like this is a lot of work here. And that's why you have the Saturn energy. Saturn is like maybe going through something a little hard in order to get to the other side. Like Saturn is here to push us out of our comfort zone to help us achieve our dreams. And that's why you have Saturn energy. And so your reading is saying, yes, are you, you, you may be wrong about dangers. You're not going to be subjected to dangers. But is it going to require at the least at the beginning a lot of hard work? Yes, it reminds me here seeing the work, achievement, success, and the Ten of Wands, that type of thing that needs so much effort in the beginning only for you with the King of Swords to be relaxed um, and mentally clear uh, at the end. So examples of things that need a lot of work in the beginning and then resting later on is creating a foundation. So... Maybe your dream or the thing that you want to work towards or the things that you want to follow and achieve will require you to do a lot of things in the beginning. And then um, maybe with the discipline of the King of Swords, you're like, okay, now I know what things to do. Um, I can run them automatically uh, I, and they're not as hard as they used to be. Like, ex for example, create putting in a lot of work to create an excel sheet with all that with all the equations that you need so that it all whenever you type in any numbers later on it gives you the results that you want will that initially require a lot of work it might even require like 10 days or sometimes even up to a month depending on how intricate this is to create that dream sheet that has all of the things that you need so that forever um, you can take in the numbers that you want, put them in, and then it gives you all the analysis that you want. The profit, the expenses, the things um, in every like spreadsheet on its own, the, the items that are running out, this, this, and that, and the other. All you need to do is just to type in everything every day and then like keep the routine of putting in every day and then it just automatically brings you what you want. So that's what I'm picking up in your reading and whatever it is that you want to get into. Um, what you need to hear is get into the flow, endure that hard work in the beginning. You might feel stuck uh, at the beginning stages as you carry all that load. And maybe you're going to experience a little bit of a burnout in the beginning. But an all, another example is like having a child. Uh, you, the parents feel burned out in the beginning and then the child grows and everything starts to stabilize. So that's the initial work. And then feeling as you organize things, as you're strategic with the King of Swords, you start to release your, uh, yourself from the energy of the Eight of Swords, of the burnout and feeling stuck. And with the Six of Cups, it's the energy of things growing by time. You can see here that as things grow by time, you feel free. You feel like they're working automatically because you've built the skills to make it work for you and not you having to work for it. And that at that point will truly be your true beginning that you're wishing for. But consider this the pre-stage for you to start achieving the things that you want, to succeed towards the things that you want, but at the same time, start enjoying it. That is when you will truly start enjoying what it is that you were seeking from the very beginning. And so here, this is saying it will be fulfilled, but just be patient with it. Take everything as feedback, just like the cat. Bounce back up uh, and in no time, you will have that beginning that you want. Just be patient with the initial stages and uh, very soon, you will be moving towards your dreams, protected from the things that you are afraid of and things starting to work out in the way that you enjoy it. I, I in fact, see you whistling later on as you work towards it. It's easy. It's enjoyable. And you do it without, I don't want to say much thought, but really without much worry. It's that phase that's just like Saturn energy 
taking you to the other side exactly where you want to be okay that's so nice to see for you my dear pile number one let's see what it else it is that you need to hear right now thank you and i also felt this one moving thank you thank you okay so you have the queen of cups wow and the world card this is very interesting and i'm going to read them together and pause for a moment because they did pop up alone the queen of cups has mastered her emotions she's found internal balance emotionally and so the guidance here is just as you work working on the outside make sure for your own good in terms of speed if you want things to to end quickly for that phase i mean to finish quickly um, balance yourself emotionally that's just exactly like the energy of the magician card which is probably a message that i must have missed out for you here you're as within so without and so your internal world 100 percent affects your outside world so the queen of cups is internal right balancing internal emotions the world card is a chapter ending on the outside so this is definitely saying if you want this initial phase to finish rather quickly make sure you're managing yourself on the inside as within so without and that's when you will get the new beginning you see as within so without new beginning as within so without new beginning so yeah uh, if you want this phase to finish quicker uh, don't go through it with stress with worry with burden right is it burdensome yes but don't go through it at least emotionally burdened uh, always be balanced and accept uh, each phase for what it is know that this is what is required go through it tranquilly and calmly um, everyone in the world faces good things and bad things it's how we manage ourselves on the inside that matters so go through it gracefully and it shall end very quickly uh, where you start enjoying it and reaping the benefits of it and whistling like enjoying the process all right where it's not heavy anymore i mean all right so let's take a look at the rest of your cards you have the strength card wow we've got the whale it's like one of the most powerful beings on earth if not the uh, most powerful so i'm not surprised it's on the strength card it's freedom it's going up um yeah let me just take a look at the rest of the cards before we talk about this you've got temperance yeah, exactly i think your message is being like repeated and when i see a repeated message i'm always sure that this is a message that is meant to be stressed on you can see here again, if you're balanced emotionally, um, things will start moving upwards in a big way because your internal strength will determine the outside strength of what it is that you're working towards. You have the two of wands. And so the message keeps being manage yourself on the inside first. Don't forget that. Two of wands and the seven of wands oh my god this oh my god it's exactly the same thing you won't believe this you probably know the two of wands is balance again <laughs> and so against the fire against the challenges against the things that you may see with the eyes as super challenging always remind yourself Take it easy, pile number one. Take it easy and it shall pass. You worry about it so much, you get stuck in place. You release it emotionally and find balance to think clearly. You shall come out of it in such a strong way. So obviously you are getting into something big. Perhaps that's why you're worried and that's why you have the word bold in your reading. It's obviously not... Um, an easy thing otherwise everyone would have done it but the awesome thing is here that your reading is repeating you will be protected does it does it have a lot of fire in it as in like is it not easy 
Does it hurt a little bit? It could hurt the unexperienced or the unprotected. In your case, you might be new to this, but you are protected. And so go through it gracefully. Uh, I, I can't stress this enough. And if you feel like I'm repeating myself, my apologies. It's just that your cards have been repeating this message three times. One, two, three. Keep repeating to yourself is probably the the message here. Keep repeating to yourself. It could be fire on the outside. I must be water on the inside. And that's the temperance, by the way. Fire on one cup and the water on the other, right? Alchemy. So that's it. It could be fire on the outside, but I am water on the inside. This way you go through it gracefully. Don't engage much emotionally. You might engage in effort-wise, but not emotionally. And that's your biggest takeaway in whatever you're going into today, my dear pile number one. Go through it with effort, with mind, but don't engage emotionally. Stay consistently balanced on the inside. You have the Three of Cups. Such a nice card. You have the Moon card. So these came out on their own. I was going to pull out some cards, which I will. But let's see what these two want to say. They're all looking at... A waterfall right here it started out with someone looking into the moon not knowing what to expect and that's not just the beginning that it shall always be like that with the circles remember all the circles things were will circle back always into a spiral this time when it goes back it's meant to create a bigger picture so what am i trying to say i'm trying to say that the cycle is you starting out on your own, boldly, not knowing what's up ahead. And then you ending up uh, watching waterfall, watching blessings, being absolutely blessed, um, being fortunate, and not alone, where you have uh, maybe a, a group of people with you, enjoying it with you. And then when it comes full circle and you've created that, it looks like it's going to be the story of your life in whatever you're getting into now. And so it's going to be the circle again. It's going to be growing exponentially for you. That's why you have a lot of circles. When it starts getting into that point again, you will start to have bigger dreams and you will start taking a risk again. That time, it's a much bigger risk than the one you've done before. And again, when you're taking that huge risk, you're alone. Maybe the others don't want to join in yet. I don't know what others are. It depends on what you're doing, of course. If this is like a business, maybe these are your partners, investors. Maybe these are your customers. I don't know. Each time as you're taking that risk, you're the bold one. And you don't know what's up ahead. But you're willing to make that bold step. And then things start working out for you, the blessings start coming in and you have so many people joining you. And you are going to be, at least in this direction, in a perpetual state of growth as you go through the, this step over and over and over and over again. And so you will be growing just like that. Happy with this, then happy with this, then can't believe you have all of that, and then this, and then this, and maybe here it is saying that one day you will be larger than life because what you have started can never end. It's just going to grow exponentially, and that's why you have the Six of Cups. And so enjoy your swim, <laughs> my dear pile number three. I think you're really going to enjoy that very much. You're creating something larger than life, and you are meant to succeed at it. So let's take a look at the rest of your cards. You have the cycle, the wheel of fortune, the perpetual cycle <laughs> of fortune. Fortune is the name of your game in this next chapter of your life, in this thing that you are doing. Remember, if you had a title for whatever it is that you were going through, that title is fortune. You're going to be very fortunate and it's going to grow exponentially. You have the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is powerful, uh, popular, charismatic, 
everyone looks up to the queen of wands and so in this area of your life you're gonna grow so much that you're gonna stand out you're gonna be seen and maybe even as a hero or as a great example and a pioneer to others so keep at it and isn't it funny how you thought it was going to be an uh, apocalypse an apocalypse only to <laughs> create a legacy here so keep at it and don't let your mind win over you continue to control your emotions wow and the last card in this row is the nine of cups you achieving your dreams You achieving your dreams look at the queen of wands looking at her dreams with admiration you are going to be very fortunate and the reason you're gonna reach so far ahead is because of the cycle that I see throughout your whole reading the circle remember remember my dear pal number one when you start feeling like oh oh things are falling they're not falling. You've just reached the pinnacle of this chapter and you're now taking a turn towards a bigger circle only to reach up somewhere much far further. And when you're in a spiral, going down is always further than anywhere you've ever been. It's just a turn towards a bigger cycle. My dear pile uh, number one. And finally, your last two cards are the five of swords and the high priestess this is saying this is so interesting we were just talking about the cycle are you in one of those cycles are, are, are you like leaving an old cycle maybe you've already been in this perpetual cycle and it's a new cycle for you the reason i think so is because of the five of swords i remember reading about this five of swords and i loved it five of swords is like one winning and one losing and here it's talking about how sometimes you've outgrown a specific hill and you're going towards a mountain. Let the small things go. Sometimes it's okay to let the fox win and get the peak of this hill. It's not your vision anymore. Help them out even and look towards your new mountain. And so the high priestess here is have wisdom to let go of what is not serving you anymore. Let it go. Because you're now in a new spiral cycle, getting into something much bigger. Let it go. Whatever drops now, let it go. Don't be afraid. You're going on a much bigger cycle at the moment. Even in your new cycle, if something is not working, let it drop and follow the guidance and follow the energy. Don't stand against the energy. Consistently stay balance and you shall move up very quickly and my dear pile number one this is exactly what i see in your reading i wish you the best of luck in your new endeavor may you always be blessed this was your reading and if you've enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that i upload and my dear pile number one i'll catch you in the next reading bye Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at a message that you are meant, sorry, a message that you need to hear right now. And to do this reading, these are the oracle cards that we will be using. Everything is listed down in the description box. Sometimes you guys ask me about the cards that I use. They're always listed in the description box. And let me introduce your pile to you. So your crystal is the beautiful soda light. Your significator card is the lover's card. And on it, it says together for and forever. Together and forever. I wonder how this is going to mean in your reading. But most important thing is, one of the most important thing is if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Libra, Aquarius, and Pisces. Of course, if these are not your zodiac signs, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Okay, let me pull out the tea leaves before we begin your reading. I also see a split here. So I'm going to take these. And yeah, these are the cards I see for this pile. 
And let's see what do you need to hear right now. You have intuition with the keyword knowing. Hmm. Wow, you've got Mars and Capricorn with authority. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, let's wait and see. You have Mars again with Sag in Sagittarius with domin do domination. Oh. getting a crazy idea of are they friends or foe because or are they both simultaneously i don't know maybe it's not talking about the person maybe it's talking about an energy that you can use to your favor very interesting let's find out i do see a green card green tea leaf you've got marriage it's interesting are you fighting or struggling with a specific energy when really you're being guided to collaborate with that energy and that's how you find your power not sure let's find out so you have the mountain i think this is going to be pretty in, uh, pretty um interesting you're reading let's see what your tarot cards say as well and i'm sure we'll find out what this is talking about so you've got the mountain and things don't want to stay straight. What's going on here? You have the et eternal child. And you have the shape shifter. How interesting. Okay, you have target a goal oriented person. You have peacock beware of great pride. ladder climbing towards success towards the peak here i feel like whatever it is that this reading is talking about you've come such a long way there's only a little bit left especially that we're seeing the ladder here must be talking about you reaching a specific goal that you have you've got thrown position of authority this is the second time you get authority it's like you will find your place of power. Maybe something else is taking power from you. And it's time that you shape shift the situation. You shift that to take your power. And that is through collaborating with it, making peace with it, rather than fighting it. You shape shift the situation by making peace maybe within because you have inner child very interesting i think i need your tarot cards this way we'll understand what the situation is <laughs> and what you need to hear maybe you already know so let's see what do you need to hear right now okay thank you Let's check out your tarot cards. So, you have the tower card. You are... Okay, so that's our first clue. You're not going through something easy at the moment. Yeah, that's why you have the fighting here. You're, you're, and you see how each one's like... I know they're pulling the piece of cloth to save Pooh. But I really feel like this is talking about struggling, trying like to push something by force. Um, when you're really meant to collaborate with it. It's what I'm intuitively picking up. Okay. And there's a furnace in there. That's the same yellow. You're burning inside through and and you're fighting it you have the nine of wands 
And that's the nine of wands, by the way. So that confirms what I feel here. Because the Nine of Wands is like something burning, something like having a lot of obstacles standing in your way, but you're still standing there fighting through. So that idea of pushing through and uh, like being so strong in difficult times, but maybe although you think that's the right thing to do, maybe you're being guided to do it in a different way. And not to suffer through it. Maybe suffering through it is one way. And going through it calmly could be another way. You know, it's kind of like the advice of work smarter, not harder. And there is a smarter in this situation. Not necessarily harder. Which might eventually take you there. But it might take you there burnt. Or burnt out. Or with a lot of losses. And perhaps this is why you have beware of great pride. Like maybe this is saying be open to look at other things and you might be hurt at the moment, too hurt to consider something else. Maybe. Let's see. You have the six of pentacles. There's another way you can t get generously from this energy. You have the ace of cups where things can flow easily and it would taste so good in the way that you want it exactly. Okay. Another ace. The ace of pentacles. By looking in the right direction. Looking at remembering what it is that you wanted. Your message here. I don't know exactly what you're struggling through. But I feel with love... Don't focus on the fight. Like, don't focus on the bad energy, the tower energy. Go back to focusing on what made you start this whole thing. What you love about it. What your goal is. Like, shift your attention back towards the goal. Because that's the, that's the road. It's not a straight way up. At every stage, it has its challenges and the things that burn. And so don't fight it because energetically with intuition, there, remember there is a spiritual side to it, not just the material. And so if you deal with it spiritually or, or intentionally different than you are now, things could really shape, shape shift for you and it could take you to that position or that dream to the peak where you deserve to be. So shift your attention. This way you get generously. Rather than struggling through it and persevering and fighting. Which is one way, but it's the path of the hard. While this is the path of the easy or, or the smarter. You have the hermit. The seven of cups. You've got the lover's card with precious friends. Are you meant to collaborate with someone or something? That, that's coming very strong here. Because that's the lover's card again, together and forever. Marriage. Are you supposed to collaborate with someone? Let's see. I'll, I'll get some um, like um, clarification cards too. Because that's been coming up a lot. Now at this point we need to understand you have the five of wands. It's like don't compete with someone. Collaborate with them. Maybe be inspired by them. See the three of cups. Collaborate and enjoy your partnership with them even. So at this point, let's use these cards to get more clarity on what it is that you're supposed to be collaborating with instead of fighting with. You've got the eight of pentacles. People who have the same mastery level. These are like eight of pentacles. These are all seems like masters. And they're all showing each other how to flip the pie. <laughs> or the pancake, right? It's like, I do it like that. But I do it like that. So it's kind of the energy of, with the competition here. Don't compete. Be inspired by each other. Do you see that? Don't compete. Be inspired by each other. So 
up. I guess I'm just going to depend on what I'm seeing on the cards since I don't know what the situation. The cards did not give me personally um, anything to understand about your specific situation. Maybe I'm not. This way I'm able to read for the collective better. So yeah, don't compete. Be friends. Be inspired by each other. If these are not people in your situation then it's what i've intuitively picked in the beginning work with the energy and don't go against the energy and sometimes it's your inner child um so it's like don't um self-criticize yourself don't hate yourself for not reaching yet don't hate the energy that's being that's opposing you at the moment it's here to inspire you the question here is what is it teaching you? Because if you expand your imagination with the Seven of Cups, you'll be able to reach things above your scope. And sometimes going from one level to the other requires us to do things differently than from what we have done previously to get to where we are. And so the challenges here are not there to hinder you, to win over you. They are Take it lovingly. Use your intuition. It's here to show you something. It's kind of like just like tarot. It's your message. It's your precious friend. It's here to show you something. And if you collaborate with it and see what it's trying to show you calmly, you will make it so much easier to the top where you belong. And you will shapeshift your, shape -shift your situation to reach your goal exactly, faster than you can ever know. And so the lover's card is a matter of choice. You can choose to struggle, which is the two energies we've been seeing here. You can choose to struggle, you can choose to take that path, or you can choose to take the easy giving path. And that is to be inspired. What is this showing me? How is it presenting to me what I want? Sometimes it's the poison that teaches the cure um, what by like trying all the different herbs, take this, take that, take this, take that, may not be the solution. It's by observing the poison, how it works, what are the receptors, I'm not a doctor by the way, just guessing, um, what are the receptors that take in the poison, can we take an herb that for temporarily block these receptors from taking the poison and thus allowing it to get out of our body without being harmed, all just guesses, but my point is, it's time to look at it because maybe you are afraid of it. Maybe it's time to look at it, at what it's trying to show you. There you will find the light. You will expand your imagination, considering, consider it your friend and not your enemy. Friend or foe is what I picked up in the beginning. It is your friend and not your enemy. What is it teaching you? What is it trying to show you? Because if you look in the direction of, um, in, in that direction, you will find the light. You know, when uh, they say sometimes when you find, want to find the path towards the light, you search for the shadow. It shows you where the light is. Someone can tell you, hey, the light's here, the light's there. But sometimes you find the light only when you look at the shadow. Where's the light? And that is what it's meant to teach you. It could be with the inner child here, the eternal child, that in some area with this specific challenge, there may be an old trauma, an old wound or something that is preventing you from taking your place. Um, maybe your ego here is you have great pride in this uh, area because first of all obviously you've got a lot of authority over it you're really good at it but at the same time this ego is protecting you from a pain so you want to look can i be more perceptive to that energy instead of running from it what is it trying to show me because if you open up your eyes and look at that shadow straight in the eyes. This is when you will finally see its message and you'll be able to bypass it and win 
easily over that energy without struggling. You will take your posi position, the position that you are meant to take. Because in reality, at the end of the day, you're, you are the peacock. You, you do stand out. You, you, you are special in this area. And so you will take your place when you heal that hurt. That is done through inspiration. Being inspired by what this energy is trying to show you. Okay, so now we understand. Let's take a look at the next three cards. You have the King of Pentacles. You have the Two of Wands. And you have the Sun card. You are at the crossroad at the moment. That's why you're going somewhere. You are like at, at a medium phase, an intermediate phase. You're trying to get to the river, aka what you believe is the blessing. But what in reality, it could be the place where you drown without knowing. The world has another, the universe has another plan for you. It's trying to take you to the other side completely. Maybe that's the blessing that's found on one side where you're used to. But if you cross to the other side, you might find something much bigger, a bigger grand, like a source of water where this is from in the first place. So without knowing, you are at a crossroad and you are crossing phases, like moving from one phase of your life to the other. And so you can see it through your intuition. If you look at it through your intuition, you will be able to see that and you will be able to bypass maybe your attachment towards something. Trust the process, be inspired by it and be positive that the other side where you're crossing is where the sun is. It's where the mastery is. It's where the blessings are. And you could be with the king of pentacles here moving from something that's already blissful. That's awesome. I, I'm not surprised because you're near the top. So how could it not be? And so you're moving from one phase that is very mm, blessed for sure. But moving into the top, look at where everyone's looking to the top. You're moving to the top. So trust the process. And uh, you it's not it's not a phase where you're meant to struggle. It's a phase where you're meant to learn to let go of what triggers you. Releasing that energy, releasing that fight is the very energy that makes people reach that authoritative position because the authority here means authority over yourself that allows you to reach a place, maybe not a lot of people where you want to go or able to get there. Only the people who have authority over themselves are able to reach the top. It's not easy because at this phase, you've gone so far. Most people here, I would imagine, are tired, want to give up already. Um, and they've gone through a lot of hits. They've broken maybe a finger They've gone through a lot of trouble already. And that's the difference that makes people go from here to there. That's why very few people reach the top. And so your place is right there. It's waiting for you. The, the difference between the people who make it from far to the top to the peak are the people who are able to have authority over themselves. Because at this stage, a lot has happened. And it needs mastery over the self more then it is just mastery over how to climb the mountain. Thus, this is why you're being guided to remove your pride. This is where you reach the target exactly. Work with the energy. Don't fight the energy. This way you shift it. And that is done through healing your inner child. Speak to your inner child with inspiration and not by following its triggers. Following its triggers only confirms to your inner child that the triggers are true all along. When you are now the, the wise one, W, wisdom, 
You're now the wise one, the spiritual one. Guide your inner child by not following these triggers, but speaking to it with kindness and saying, hey, let's be inspired. Let's see what it's showing us. Let's see what it's trying to tell us, what is, what is trying to take us. You heal through this phase, your inner child. And that's not by fighting the energy. It's by befriending your inner child. I think this is what it's saying. Befriend and make f great friends with your inner child where you become one whole. You're not two entities anymore. One in one direction and the other in the other direction. You become whole as you harbor your inner child. Speak to it kindly and say, let's be inspired. Let's not struggle. This is where you reach your mastery together and become one. And this is the difference of the people who stay here at the top and the people who reach the peak where you are meant to go. It is a time of change. It is your time of change. And thus, look at what is important. Okay, let's see what the last card in your row is. I feel this one. Oh, this one. Okay. The King of Wands. The person who has found their strength. The authority. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Not only are you getting what you want, but most importantly, it is the story of you, of how you found or regained your power. And my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see in your reading. I'm wishing you the best of luck with this. You're, you're like at a liminal stage, um, moving from one phase of your life, one phase of who you are even, to the next. Congratulations with that. Uh, don't be afraid to look at the shadow because it will lead you to your dreams. My dear pile, yeah, befriend it. My dear pile number two, this is your reading. I wish you the best of luck with the situation. I know you're going to rock it because that's what your cards are showing. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the beautiful tiger's eye. Oh, you've got three here. Uh, your significator card is the strength card. And on it, it says a hard and bold voyage or enterprise. So let's see how this fits into your reading. And of course, if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Leo, Capricorn and Aries. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you guys, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Okay, so let's take a look at your tea leaves. Ooh, we can see a green tea leaf right there. And we have a split here. Ooh, we have a lot of tea leaves. You have a timing here. And I do see a green one popping up. All right, let's take a look at your cards and see what you have in today's reading and what you need to hear right now. So, wow, you've got grace with the beauty way. Okay. Okay, sorry, I had to uh, fix the light. You have Venus in Leo with affair. Hmm. Jupiter in Cancer with Speculation. And let's take this one. You have Career. Hmm. Okay. You have the riddle. Yeah. It seems like you're going through something difficult at least to solve at the moment. And that's why you have this mandala here. Hmm. You have the dead end. Yeah, it, I feel like uh, you're going through something difficult and you and it's so puzzling 
you don't know how to solve it at the moment. Wow, and you've got the one. You know what this reminds me of? The dead end and the one. Sometimes when you're able to touch the divine is at a threshold when it's so difficult. That's a threshold where you get to the light kind of thing. Sometimes it closes up so much that you touch the light. You touch the magic to the other side. And that's why hitting rock bottom is only upwards from there. So that's what I'm seeing here. You have the key. Successful outcome to your problem. So nice to see, especially in that role. Okay. Let's keep the timing cards to the side for now. Actually, why don't we place them here? So you have the month December. And you have November. So November, December. Okay. What if we place them like this? This way we have space for the rest of your cards. You have marriage. Wheel. Indecisiveness. Allowing your life to ramble aimlessly. Not unsuccessful plans. Do you need to see the marriage card? Maybe a little bit with the rings. Yeah. I'm just trying to keep um, space for more cards. You have cracked cup. Dissatisfaction with life. And finally, you have weeping willow. Family sorrow. Yeah, yeah. Something broke recently. And uh, obviously you've been crying a lot or at least enduring so much pain inside you up to a point where you feel like you've reached a dead end that you're going on in life and it's really not giving anything things are so complicated with the knot and the riddle here and i'm so sorry about that my dear pile uh, number three let me read what this mandala says in the guidebook Hold on. So it says, every living being has the power within them to recognize the sacredness of this life, to see the inherent divinity of their own body and the earth's body, to cultivate beauty and live in reverence to the exquisite nature within, all, uh, within and all around them. Spirituality is not measured by the texts you have studied, the practices you have collected, or the beads you wear. It is the depth of your relationship with divinity. In form and formlessness, living a spiritual life is an inside job and needs no special costume or public announcement to gain recognition. It is a recognition that the divine is pulsing through all of creation and your own being is an expression of this miracle of life walking the beauty way means living life as an offering to the highest it means treating our body as an altar making our home a temple seeing that nature is the garden of eden life is a ceremony and living is worship to grace i really feel as well the idea that spiritual people aren't the ones who look like they're living a spiritual life often spiritual people are the very people who are judged on the outside as doing everything wrong sometimes we got to be careful because it is the very person who we're pointing fingers at and going ah oh, what a horrible disgusting person <laughs> who's done this and this they must be horrible and this is something i've learned personally growing up that Sometimes it is that very person who we think is a horrible person that is purging their shadow. That And healing is ugly, right? Healing is ugly. And sometimes the very person who we look at and say, how disgusting, how would they do that to another human being? Um, are the ones healing. Uh, sometimes some people let it go and sometimes purging is ugly and healing is ugly. And we want to remember um, to not judge everyone by what they're doing and to recognize that sometimes the spiritual experience may not look pretty, but it 
definitely takes us to beautiful places, the beauty way. So don't judge others, don't judge yourself, and most importantly, don't judge your situation. Sometimes it is, it is right there that you touch the magic. So let's take a look at your tarot cards and see the situation exactly for what it is. Or maybe I'm not meant to know the situation. Maybe you already know it. And I'm just meant to deliver exactly what you need to hear right now. So, so let me pull out your tarot cards. And look at how this mandala looks like somehow like this riddle it feels like right there when things are so knotted and complicated is that magical place where you touch the light where things change in a magical way in your life that's where the key is to the lock that you have been looking for where exactly the point of shatter and deep sorrow where you feel it's the end that you've been betrayed Sometimes that is exactly where the tunnel is, where you're coming to the other side. So I think that's definitely your message here. But obviously there's more that you need to hear about this hard situation. It says a hard and bold voyage or enterprise. This is where you find the strength to come out to the other side. So you have the five of swords and look. Oh where it's all gray and desert. This is where the light comes, where you win. This is the moment, believe it or not, my dear pile number three, this is the moment where you're gonna win right now through the difficulties that you're going through. This is the magical transformation where you went, you're going from your weakest to your strongest because sometimes it is a like a coin on one side is the weakness and on the other is the strength that beats it so you have the king of swords a shift of an idea here is the turning point from the lowest energy to the highest the action of wands the rainbow it's a desert right but look at the rainbow in the desert this is the path to the light the path to the blessings and it's happening right now for you in fact you're moving you might feel like you're rambling aimlessly without knowing that you're only going up to go up a steep hill you know how um when we go down a hill a steep hill really quickly only to have the momentum to go up very quickly to the other side and that's what i feel is going on here you have the magician you're receiving that rainbow right in the desert if you're feeling like how how is this turning into a light how am i gonna get this beautiful thing amongst the lowest point you can see it here in the desert where you think there's no possible way for you to get what you want. This is exactly where you receive it because the universe is abundant and always finds a way to reach you. So be open to receive these days magic with the magician card. And remember, as within, so without. That's why you have the king of swords. The shift from one level to transpassing it as a doorway to the blessed side can sometimes be through one strong thought where you receive the blessing right in the middle of a place that is cut off from everything. And that's why you have the dead end. You are at a point where you feel like, how can this possibly be fixed? Be open to receive the magic of the universe and change it through a powerful thought. You have the death and rebirth. Can you believe that? This is the, um, uh, what can I say? <laughs> it's the same thing. This is the point where you think it's ending only to be rebirthed into a new world, right where you are. Sometimes it's not about taking actions. Sometimes it's not about 
uh, seeing anything that could take you out of it. Sometimes the universe takes you out of it in the weirdest way that you would have never imagined had you imagined a thousand scenarios. So the key is right there. An energy, an infinite energy of how you can come out of this exists already. Not just one, not two. An infinite amount of energies exists. And the key to coming out of it, to getting one of these keys, is to change a thought powerfully. You have the inspiration of cups. The Hierophant. The Five of Cups. Five, five. It's a time of change. The Hierophant is a five and you've got the Five of Cups and you've got the Fifth House. Five, five, five. This is a time of change right now. You have the Action, another night. The Action of Cups and the World Card. See, the world card is an end of a chapter. You're saying goodbye to an old chapter because you, just like a butterfly, have transformed as a person. And that's what's intended here. It's kind of like the universe closing up on you in all ways. So you have no choice but to change something within you, just like a cocoon, in order to change forms as a person and see the light. The darkness that leads to the light, just like a cocoon, that gives you your freedom to fly, finding the light. And so with the Five of Cups here, I feel like learning to see through disappointment, clear the tears just like a windshield, clear them off of your soul, and give a new chance for your heart to love the world. Give a new chance to the heart to love the world. Because the world has both the yin and the yang. It has the dark, extreme dark, but it also has the light, extreme light. And you can experience the other side. In fact, sometimes we go, all the time, we go to the extreme dark to be able to see the extreme light. And that's the idea. Sometimes we need to understand what darkness is to be able to appreciate and understand and value the light. Because if there was no darkness, you wouldn't understand the concept of light, no matter how much time it was explained to you. You're gonna say, cup, cards, what do you mean light? Only when it goes dark, will you be able to understand light as a concept. Oh, and the light here as a concept seems to be the empowerment of your thoughts the power of your thoughts only when you're able to see its power in the dark will you be able to use it effortlessly in the light so wipe your tears my dear pile number three and start loving the world once again be open to the world what did the darkness do but lead you to the end your key is right there in the light. With career, this is where the work is, to see the light. This is what will take you easily out of this knot. Because this knot will continue to be tighter and tighter until you grasp what, it's, what you're meant to see out of it. It's like someone teaching you the trick of how to untie a knot very easily, which we, we've seen in camping, right? It's like, do this, that tights it, and then do that, that takes it off easily. And so why are you struggling through it when you're meant to see how to untie it in the right way? And to change your mind and to have a powerful mind, it seems like you're being invited to begin it, it, being inspired and loving the things that are already right next to you in life. What things can you do today to shift your focus from how difficult it is to what you appreciate about your world today? This is seeing the light in the darkness. This is cracking the cocoon 
where the light comes in and you being free. That's the crack right there. And the crack is not focusing on the light, but focusing on your will to live, on your will to be free, on the blessings that you have in your world, world right now. What beautiful things do you have in your world that you can see and appreciate today? Because with the crab, again, this is water, the emotions. This is where you're guided to look at. Because this is the pathway, the tunnel from the darkness to the light, where everything in your world will change completely. And so this with the marriage is talking about how you don't want to fight it. You want to marry that energy. You want to live in harmony with that energy, to accept what's going on at the moment for now. And as you start falling in love with life, what type of blessings do you have today that you're so blessed to have that others are fighting at the moment to get? Are you lucky with something physically that you have? Your, some things in your body working well? Whatever it is, focus on the beautiful things that you have today. And remember that there are many others struggling for it. Enjoy it. It's not like, you know, you have to be forced to like them. It's really appreciating them and, and loving the beautiful things that you have for now. Because accepting what's going on and loving the blessings that you have is the emotional balance that you are being guided to look at to come out of the darkness into the light. This is where the key lies. Acceptance, acceptance, marrying the situation, acceptance and grace, uh, sorry, and gratitude. It is the key to strength and from, and moving to the other tunnel. Because this can close, you'll be already out. It doesn't matter if it closes. You're moving to the other side. It won't be your reality, oops, any longer. Eh? You've got successful outcome to your problem. You will be coming out of this. There is no way. Okay, so let's take a look at the rest of your cards. You have the Ace of Pentacles. There's a new beginning on the horizon. In fact, you're just there. You're about to leave that old life and start a new. Look at that. Temperance. You're, look, you're stepping into the new world. And this is your message right now with the white feather. This is your guidance. It is here to let you know that you're stepping into a new world right now. Grasp the lesson it is trying to teach you. It is through the mind to see the blessing in the desert. This is where the birth and rebirth is. This is where you start receiving this blessing for real. You have the Ten of Cups. You're stepping into now the opposite energy. Ten of Cups is being elated, super happy. So here... We can see there was a dead end and now we're seeing you anew stepping into a new chapter of being elated. So that's the opposite energy, complete opposite energy. And just like you've experienced extremely difficult times, the yin and the yang. Now it's time for you to experience extremely happy times. You have the ten of, oh my God, ten of cups and ten of pentacles right next to each other guys really <laughs> you are about to step into very fortunate times where you're going to be very happy very fortunate and blessed you see the hands extending throughout your reading you will it's fated for you to receive so much in this next chapter of your life just follow the guidance of the heart of coming from the darkness to the light where you transform. You've got the six of wands. It is the card of success and victory. You'll victoriously come out of what you felt was impossible to get out of. Victorious, successful outcome to your problem. You're going to succeed out of this. The key really 
is a spiritual one. And that is to understand that there is more to life than what meets the eye. It could look like a desert, but it can never mean that is the end. Remember that there are laws to the universe, much bigger than what we know. And sometimes it's about vibrating in the right. Sometimes, I th personally, I think it's all the times. It's about vibrating in the right frequency. You have gratitude and acceptance. Be happy where you are, no matter where you are. This way, nothing can ever control you. And this way, you step out of it victorious, understanding the energy of the universe and moving into your time of light. And maybe even fame with the Six of Wands. There are a lot of cameras here. Who knows? This might be just a preview to your future in some aspect. So, my dear pile number two, sorry, my dear pile number three, this was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. I wish you the best from my luck, but I know that many things are changing. I forgot to tell you guys, especially in November and December, it doesn't mean that you're going to wait all of this time until November and December comes. Obviously, you're meant to come out of this right now, which is what I'm seeing throughout your reading. But you do have some clicks here, some popularity, some great victory that's supposed to happen. Look out for something major in your life happening in November and December of this year. And my dear pile number three, this was your reading. Wishing you the best of luck from my heart and wishing you to step out of this victorious. I'm sure this is going to happen for you. I can see it in your cards. I know the best is yet to come for you right now. All the best of luck with that, my dear pile number three. And if you've enjoyed your reading, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pile number three, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! Hi, pile number four. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at a message that you need to hear right now. First, let me introduce your pile to you. You have the beautiful Rhodonite. Your significator card is the Seven of Wands. And on it, it says, never compete with a person who has nothing to lose. Very interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, the signs for this pile are Virgo, Scorpio, and Gemini. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your zodiac signs, as I always remind you guys, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Okay, so let's take a look at your tea leaves. Ooh, we've got a split. We've got several splits, so I'm going to take that. And I'm going to take these yeah that's all oh no 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 wait you've got two timing cards that are showing themselves to us so let's take that oh this one fell all right i love the tea leaves <laughs> never enough tea leaves all right let's keep them to the side for now and take a look at your oracle cards so you have sovereignty with self-empowerment. Okay. Okay, you have the moon in Libra with companionship. And you have Saturn in Aquarius with eccentricity. I see a lot of power with sovereignty here. But I am also picking up something here, but I'm going to wait and see what we get. So you've got the mystic. And look at the two flying creatures here. Is this talking about your freedom? Maybe. You have the threshold. I think you are at a crossroad. You have, oh, the siren. You're being called to the other side. Okay. The other side of your, towards your transportation. And you could be struggling with something at the moment. 
and if you release it because it says never compete with a person who has nothing to lose if you release it you get to the other side let's see weirdly enough with eccentric eccentricity so you have dolphin financial gain usually coming from something you did in the past You have dark woman, dealings or relationship with a woman with dark complexion or hair. You have fly, a period of ill health and, or depression. You have rooster, an arrogant, boastful person you should not cross. September, you've got the month of September. You have mountain, major challenge to overcome. And then you have the butterfly, being free and flying. A change for the best. As well as the month of June. Whoa, this month. If you're watching this now, if you're watching this later, obviously June here means this month. September for you means uh, July, August, September in three months. Okay, very cool. Uh, let's take a look at your tarot cards before we begin analyzing everything. Okay, so what do you need to hear right now, my dear pile number four? What do you need to hear right now? So you have the magician. By the way, with the huge infinity here, it shows me that you are in fact on a threshold because the form of your life is changing. You're moving into a new world, just like the butterfly. Your form is changing, your life is changing. You, who you are, I mean, is changing. And it's at that stage where everything looks weird until it forms correctly, just like a butterfly, and just like a teenager, you know, when things start to look weird a little bit as we go from childhood to adulthood, you can see a teenager having both these aspects of still looking like a child, but a little bit like an ad ad adult. And it's a bit weird, awkward, that, that awkward stage. And so your life and who you are as a person, both of them are like changing forms like a butterfly. And as you're going through that transformational period, your life's looking weird at the moment. You're like, what's going on? What's this? What's that? And you can see some good things about it, but you can also see some challenging things about it. And you're like, what is going on? So that's what I feel is going on in your life. You as a person also, you're changing. You can see some really good things about yourself that you're proud that you're changing towards. But you can see other things that are weird. And you're like, hey, why is this happening to me? Um, like, why is my body like that? Or why is my, why am I suddenly afraid of this when I wasn't afraid before? Or why am I angry at this? So new things are emerging all through, through and through your life in every way. Okay, you have the world card, but seeing the world card here, that awkward stage is ending very soon. So you're not going to be in, be in this in-between world for long. The good news here is that this month in June, you'll be seeing a lot of changes in your life. Finally, the all the awkward things, the loose ends, the weird things you're seeing about even yourself, maybe things about your body or a a an illness that you noticed, all of these major challenges are um, at least this month you're holding all the loose ends and you know, see holding the loose ends and you know what to do about it. Here with the deal, you have an agreement or you have new routines or you have solutions or things are just starting to work out in these different areas of your life. Okay, so let's take a look at the rest of your tarot cards. You have the lover's card. Wow. Are you going to be making choices or is this a new connection that you're forming? Not sure. You have the five of wands. The eight of wands. The four of cups. You have the strength card. 
you have the seven of wands the tower card and for now let's stop at the justice card can you see how you are changing as a person you see and how your life is changing from one world to the other do you see that now that's even the seven of wands that we're seeing here so now i'm starting to grasp another idea at the moment do you see with the tower card and the seven of wands never compete with a person who has nothing to lose so i would say this reading is saying don't hold on to the struggle let it go let the energy flow the idea of let the energy flow freely has come up in another pile today i can't really remember which one but if you were drawn to both this is definitely what you need to hear today let the energy flow through you yeah let the energy flow through you don't stand in your own way these changes are there for your own good your life is changing. You as a person are changing. Maybe even your features and your looks, your hair color, because we've got here someone who's got uh, brown hair to somebody who's got blonde hair. I'm not saying that your hair color will change, obviously. I'm just picking up on the energy of how your features surprisingly are changing. There's no way y how you look, your health, your life, your goals, everything about your life as you know it is changing these days. So allow that energy to flow. Sometimes change as it's happening, as you're on the threshold, doesn't look good. You know how an artist sometimes draws out some things, which frustrates me personally. I'm not an artist, but watching artists, sometimes I love watching them and they, you know, do beautiful things and suddenly they surprise you. They color their brush and they go, whoosh, 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 and you're like, why? <laughs> why did you do that? <laughs> Only to watch them creating something more marvelous. And you're like, you stop squinching your stomach and you go, oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> so I kind of feel that this is what's happening to you. Just like from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Your whole life, there's this period of you quenching your stomach. You're like, no, uh, why? At best, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to be scary. I don't really see scary cards except for the tower, to be honest. And if you actually see things that scare you with the tower cards, First of all, do know that you're protected, but it's telling you don't fight this force. Just let it be. Don't compete with it, with the five of wands. Don't compete. And the five of wands is the card of competition. So don't compete with that energy. The, the things that you really might feel like you're struggling with, you, you know, maybe it's like striking a chord. It's making you feel afraid. Not that anything drastic actually is happening, but they remind me of triggers, the lightning. So if you're triggered here and there, maybe this is talking about fears. So if it triggers any sorts of fear, fears, don't compete against it. Just let the energy flow. Because something fated is about to happen in your life. Uh, something major fated is about to happen in your life this month. And this is just the call of it, taking you from one side to another. So cross that mountain calmly because there is a, sur a huge surprise waiting for you on the other side. Something that you will love once this is completed and once you are on the other side. Sagittarius suggests that it's going to be an amazing adventure. But the highlight of this adventure with the butterfly, the moth, and the eagle here, with sovereignty as well, shows how you're going to have the power to be free from something that could be tying you down at the moment. So let's explore further. My dear pile number four, you have the temperance card. Be balanced. If I'm not mistaken, there was another pile. They might have even had 
eccentricity if i'm if i'm remembering this correctly and they had not exactly your message but something very similar about letting go so you have temperance you've got the five of cups you're dropping some things out of your life and you're getting new things being offered to you and there's a whirlpool you can see it here of some things being taken out of your life for good reasons and other uh, energy emerging as a surprise. So yeah, great time of change, my dear pile number four. You have the page of cups. This is awesome. Do you see how this page of cups is radiating with big dreams that they love? So this is definitely saying, let what is dropping drop, let it go, let it go because you'll be able to grasp and hold exactly what it is that you're wishing for. It's just like the cycle of life, the sun and the moon. The sun sets and the moon rises along with the stars or what we think has arisen and risen, sorry. And you look at the stars and you marvel at them and you start drawing them and you start enjoying your night and then when the night's ending if you were enjoying it you start being bummed about the sun coming out but the sun coming out is the most beautiful thing in the world and you start enjoying how the, the sun sets uh, sorry the sun rises and how you get to see all the colors of life all of a sudden now we have the energy to go out and have fun everyone has woken up now there's a different new adventure you get to have different type of fun and maybe the fun at night was introspect introspection and marveling at the stars and its magic and learning about navigation. In the morning, you get to connect with others and look at the flowers and make projects together and, and plan things and have fun and excitement in life. So this is saying every phase has a beautiful thing to offer and the other phase has different things to offer. So let go because this new phase it's offering you exactly what you're wishing for. So just learn to let go and not to fight. You have the Eight of Pentacles. Wow, and the Fool card. And you see with the cycles of the moon. Very soon, I feel like in a month time, perhaps this is why it's saying June, maybe you're already in that process. You will start a new fated beginning and things will roll out very quickly once you begin anew. It just might be a little shock of change. Hey, 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 why is this leaving my life? What is this? Why is this changing how I look? Why is this uh, affecting this or that? If you trust the process, you'll come out of a tunnel into a new one where everything, just like a teenager, fixes itself out and suddenly you're glowing and beautiful and your life is starting anew. It's a whole new world right there. So I want to explore what is this whole new world that you're getting into. It's going to be early in the morning with the rooster. Maybe you're going to be traveling early in the morning. Maybe you will get an important message about this change sometime early in the morning. But do know that your life is changing during a sunrise. So what is this new beginning exactly? This new world? How is it like? Wow. You as a person and your life is changing. Death and rebirth obviously shows us the idea that many things in your life are going to end. And so are many new things that you're wishing for that are beginning. You're going to see a much more beautiful world. A world that speaks to your heart. And it's beginning right now in June. You've got the Five of Swords. You're going to let go, first of all, of some things. Maybe you thought were good, but essentially we're creating a lot of headache to your life. Maybe they were allowing you to win at a lot of things, but at the core of it, it was creating a lot of headache heading it in your life and beating you down so looked like you were winning but really it was more like losing and it may have actually affected your health in your life as well mental health and maybe even physical health 
So that's going to be out of your life. Ooh, you've got the Knight of Cups. I think another change that's coming up is a beautiful offer that you love. It is falling on top of the Lover's card. So for some of you, uh, one of the major changes that are happening is love, a love story beginning, someone asking you out. Uh, if this is if this does not resonate with you, then someone is asking you uh, for something like offering you a new job that you will love or offering you um, an opportunity that you will love. But the but it starts with a huge offering. Can we kindly like quickly get some clarification before we move? What are these like different offerings mean, please? For pile number four, for the collective, the different people listening. So for some of you, you're being free from something that you hate is tying you down. And you're being offered something to liberate you. And, and liberation is very strong in your reading, for sure. So liberation from something that's tying you down. That's one energy. Another is a nine of swords. Liberation from something that is causing you stress at the moment. So someone offering you something to help you take out of your take you out of your misery, your stress, your anxiety and your sadness. Another energy is the 2 of cups. I knew the 2 of cups would I I, sw I swear I knew it. <laughs> the 2 of cups is the card of love. So for some of you, this is obviously a, a love proposal, like someone asking you out. And the king of cups is emotional fulfillment. Uh, offer, someone's offering you something with something you have been manifesting and hoping for, which is very clear in your reading. So allow that energy to change um, because it's taking some bad energy out and it is allow, it, it is someone is offering you something that you have been wishing for. Someone's offering you something in love. Someone is offering you something that will allow you to take you out of misery or take you out of a situation where you were stuck and couldn't take it anymore. These changes, my dear pile number four, I'm repeating, are happening this month. But something major, this waking up in the morning where your whole life changes, especially for some of you financially, is starting in September. Okay, so let's see what else uh, is happening here. These days in June, how's your life changing? Wow, the sun card. The sun is healing. So if you have been complaining from uh, something physically, an ailment or some changes in your features or anything, it's moving to the positive. You're healing and it's really happening to your favor. Don't worry about it. Your health is going to be better than ever. And... You have the three of swords. Okay, so the three of swords is pulling at the strings of one owns heart. It teaches us that sometimes we are the ones that put ourselves into our own misery. It's kind of like living in a perpetual cycle of reliving the past or in a perpetual cycle of fearing the future. So the changes that are happening these days are finally healing you from the past and the future. These changes will not make you wake up like this in the morning or will not make you live your life like that of crying over the past. Maybe you're getting such a beautiful future that part or one of the main energies that's going to change is your happiness. So not just your health, also your happiness that's what's changing because the three of swords again is about pulling at the strings of one owns heart. So here this is talking about how things are changing where you're not sad about the past anymore. You're letting go now of the past. It's in the past. And also so many positive things are happening where you don't have to be worried about the future any longer. So this is like be amazing changes happening in your life my dear pal number four you're so lucky and so with the threshold here just like a teenager i would say endure that awkward time where you're going like oh this is good oh but this is bad oh what's going on here oh i like that oh i don't like that what is happening this is a pile where so many weird things are happening in your life it's just like a cleansing of the earth where the uh, the core comes out 
to bring you minerals and blessings and the old gets into the earth like this uh, changes these changes may not be comfortable but it is serving the rest of your life for you to be blessed and happy so endure this little time we did see that it's just a little time in fact and major changes are happening this month for you. Not to mention that the major big things, the results perhaps, the new world will rise for you in, the, in September in an early morning. You're waking up with the sunrise, maybe to travel to a new location or to go to a new job or to begin something. Maybe you'll hear some great news and you'll start something at an early morning one day in September. Remember this reading that you will wake up in your new chapter on that day. That's the rise, sun rising in your life. And so you might have loved or maybe even adored things about the night sky. And good for you. It's awesome that you were able to appreciate your life as it was. You really need a, a huge hug. Good for you. <laughs> but now allow for the sun to truly rise in your life. And my dear pile number four, this is exactly what I see in your reading. I wish you the best of luck from my heart. It's a great time of change for you. And if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. I forgot to tell you something. I'm so sorry about that. Look, uh, this is a time where you also make some great friends, by the way. All right. So my dear, on the other side of this, you'll be making a lot of great friends or like a family or people that you will enjoy your time with. And this is not a small deal. This is obviously a big deal. It's the seventh house. You'll be making a lot of intimate, beautiful connections in your life. And my dear pile number four, this was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pile number four, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.